statements by Catholic bishops, Protestant leaders, rabbis, and Muslim leaders have symbolic power and carry political weight. Formal resolutions affirmed by hundreds of thousands of leaders on faith have helped embolden our legislators to act. Sometimes they lack the courage to act. Our country, the United States, witnessed what has been considered the worst oil spill in our world's history with the BP massive oil spill of millions of gallons of oil into the fragile ecosystem of the Gulf of Mexico, where I used to live. There's an urgent need to regulate worldwide corporate uh, energy companies and put uh, prioritize caring for our sacred earth as a primary moral concern for the corporate world. Now is the time for religious leadership to be heard. Now is the time to engage religious bodies to speak out for creation. As chair of the Environmental Committee of the Central Conference of American Rabbis, I've joined with committed colleagues uh, to use our faith traditions to increase awareness and encourage action in response to climate change and other uh, environmental challenges. We've passed national resolutions on climate change and energy policy. We have established environmentally conscious green guidelines for our myriad congregations around the country. We have worked with Greater Washington Interfaith Power and Light to green all religious communities around America in order to serve as a model of, to millions of people who observe their faith traditions. And finally, I believe that our religious voice must be strongest close to home, manifest in how we live our daily lives. And of course, our collective interfaith efforts gather their strength from the work each of us does within our own particular community. I also serve as a congregational rabbi in Washington, D.C. at Temple Emmanuel, which has been working on greening its agenda for over 20 years. We believe that local action by religious communities can have national and international impact. How have we implemented our agenda? Let me mention a few ways. We installed solar panels on the roof for our eternal light. We're now covering our religious build building with solar panels. We've added wind power from a regional collective. We've made use of energy efficient zoning, lighting, and office equipment throughout during our building phases. We use passive solar. All the utensils that we use in the, in the congregation uh, come from uh, sugarcane, and they're biodegradable, including uh, plates and utensils. Every church and congregation and mosque should do that. We planted sustainable gardens to meet our annual ritual needs, growing grape harvests, horseradish, indoor olive and pomegranate trees in the synagogue. We regularly schedule environmental Sabbaths and other opportunities for learning with world representatives and state and national leaders. We sell CPL compact fluorescent bulbs and have information about climate change at our congregation's coffee tables. We have become an energy efficient EPA Energy Star community in one of the nation's first zero carbon footprint communities by supporting alternative energy investments Every church, every mosque, every synagogue should become a zero carbon footprint uh, community. Uh, our webpage includes our Green Shalom Action Guide, which is meant to bring the greening to the home and to the community. Let us all work with people of every discipline because they're our congregants, whether they be diplomats, scientists, environmentalists, engineers, architects, writers, artists, poets, and journalists across our countries to create programming that changes hearts and minds and helps us to refocus on sustainable living. We need a cultural shift, a paradigm, a new paradigm of living, and the religious communities can move forward on this. We need a culture of meaning and not possessing. Our own community has borne fruit with a good number of our young people who see the environment as a spiritual issue when they grow up choosing science, media, religion, and public policy areas that deal with the environment. We in our faith communities must train future religious leaders and lay leaders to see the close connection between caring for God's earth and our spiritual traditions. People of faith 
in our world number in the billions. We are the largest constituency of any nation in the world. The opportunity to be heard is greater than in previous decades. We have a prophetic responsibility to seize it, to act. There is so much that each of us can do and must do in our own homes. When you leave here, make the pledge. What can I do as a person of faith in my own consumption, in my own home, and do it as an act of faith in our congregations, in our countries, to work together as a global family in the cause to preserve and <coughs> sanctify life? Rabbi Tarfan of the second century reminds us in an ancient quote, it is not your duty to finish all the work, but neither are you at liberty to desist from it. May it be that years hence, our children and children's children will look back with appreciation to this moment when we heeded one of the great moral imperatives of our times. May they know that we had the vision and the strength and the courage to fulfill our sacred obligations to preserve and protect the earth in all of its majesty, this garden which, with, which we have been entrusted for those who will follow. Thank you.